This is part 5 of APS taxes. In this video, we are going to see how we manage an anterior bleed that is a diffuse bleed by with anterior nasal packing. So, the indication of anterior nasal packing I have already told you. Now, coming to the technique. So, here we have three methods. Either it is going to be a traditional technique that is one or we can just insert a marrow cell or in India we call it Avalon pack or third one we have a gel form. So, first let us go through the uh, traditional technique where we use a long ribbon gauze. First, we have to uh, suction clean all the blood which is there in the nasal cavity followed by we will keep a pack in the nose and this pack contains a de nasal decongestion which decreases the bleed also and a local anesthetic, anesthetic agent and this will be placed for, a, for 5 to 10 minutes and we will remove it followed by placement of a pack. This pack will be kept layer by layer in a ladder pattern like this and it will be not plain pack, it will be soaked in antibiotic or petroleum jelly or bismuth in bismuth iodophone paraffin paste which the bismuth iodine paraffin paste it looks something if it is applied it looks something like this it is an antiseptic by the way or it can be any antibiotic ointment too so this pack it will be left uh, inside at least for one or two days so third day morning we will remove the pack so these are the pictures now let me give a small demonstration so nasal packing which I have showed you will will combine these two medications like how I mentioned before and we have already made a pack and that pack will be kept in the nasal cavity with as you see here. So I am going to uh, place the cottonoids here that is the first one at least 3 or 4 cottonoids and it will be left inside at least for 5 minutes. So, this will control, uh, it, it has got two effects, one is it is a de it contains a nasal decongestant and but uh, we should be extra cautious especially if uh, the patient is a known hypertensive. Sometimes we try to avoid if suppose the BP is very high and the second one, second medication being lignocaine that is an anesthetic agent. So, that the patient experiences less pain. Now, this pack say 3 or 4 we will keep it for 5 or 10 minutes and after that it will be removed followed by placement of the anterior nasal pack that is a roll of gauze which has been uh, impregnated or soaked in any of the ornaments which I have already mentioned. So, this is a pack. So, this will be kept layer by layer one above the above of the other. The main idea being it will give pressure over the breeding spot. This is called the ladder technique from below upwards. That is the first layer followed by, followed by second layer. So, that is how it goes. And sure, these type of patients they are not managed in the OPD, they need to be admitted, and whatever other conditions the person is, we have to take care of other conditions also. So, like how I have mentioned, the pack will be there for 2 days, at least for 2 days, some cases it may be 3 days and followed by removal on the third day morning and after that, we have the after removal of the pack, the patient has to be in the hospital bleeding free at least for 1 day so that we can discharge him. And of course, IV, IV, anti, IV antibiotic is a must. So, these are the advice when he is in the hospital. Antibiotics will be going on. Generally, if the patient is admitted, I'll, I like to start with IV antibiotic, analgesic the mild ones, acetaminophen, not the stronger ones, and restrict his general activities and the pack to be removed after two days. Now, the second option. Second option is we have a merosol packing. This merosol is nothing but a small pack which is a polyvinyl alcohol. The, the, the characteristic of the property of the pack is that. Once the placement of the pack inside the nasal cavity is very easy, like I will I'll give you a demonstration, then you can understand better. That is one. And once you apply saline over it, inject or apply saline over it, the pack merosal it swells up. It occupies the whole of nasal cavity. It fills up the nasal cavity. It applies pressure over the bleeding spot, and the bleeding stops. That's how it works. So now let me show you how you are going to place it. 
So first, we have to keep the nasal packing, uh, nasal packing so that we decongest the nose as well as anesthetize the nose, like how we did for anterior nasal packing. Same way, traditional technique. So I'm here. I'm placing the nasal packs, cotonoids, with the medi medicated ones. The first one, second one, and the third one, followed by removal of the pack. So this pack will be, will be these cotonoids will be there at least for five minutes, at least for five minutes, five to ten minutes is a general rule. Now after removal, the Merosol or the Avalon pack, either it is inserted directly into the nasal cavity or some of us we prefer to apply some antibiotic ointment because it is going to stain for at least for two to three days. So I could prefer to coat it up with uh, Mipresin ointment. There. So I am applying the ointment first and is the ointment being applied and now next I am going to place the pack inside. So insertion is easy, it is painless too does not take a long time followed by installation of saline or distilled water. So now you please watch when you install the saline how the merosal pack swells up. See the size now just for you to have a better look I am going to turn the merosal just for you to have a look. See the whole merosal is going to swell up now see the size now and see how it is going to increase in size, see. It swells up up to 4 to 5 times, it, occup it will occupy the whole of nasal cavity. It will apply pressure over the bleeding spot wherever it is and it will control the bleed. So that is how it works. Now the post discharge advice, so either we will do the anterior nasal packing the traditional one or we will keep a merosol and two days is over, we have removed the pack and the third, fourth day morning there is one day free of no bleeding at all and without any pack and the patient to be discharged. The advice going to be one, we will give you a course of antibiotic which has to be taken for next five to seven days and few more advices which are you are supposed not to do at home, you have, you have to avoid certain things at home. One, try to avoid lifting heavy weights and try, that is to avoid any sort of strain. Second, if you are constipated, try to uh, play, we'll prescribe some laxatives, we do not want you to strain in the restroom. Because any sort of strain, it can, it can precipitate a bleed. Likewise, if you have a, if you are an alcoholic, please quit, uh, stop drinking, uh, taking alcohol. If you are a smoker, quit smoking and try to avoid, uh, uh, avoid passive smoking too. Avoid hot liquid, uh, uh, hot liquid and food, liquid foods, drinks and food. Stay on a cool, uh, stay on a soft and cool diet, cold diet, and try to avoid hot, steamy head showers. If you feel like sneezing, open your mouth and sneeze. Avoid no nose blow. Don't avoid that, and avoid nose picking too and try to avoid all the pain, strong painkillers like brufin, diclofenac, acyclofenac, cox inhibitors, aspirin, all that try to avoid. So these are the general advice to be followed. So in this video, mainly we have seen that how you control anterior bleed which is diffuse with uh, control with the help of an anterior nasal packing. So the next part we will deal with posterior bleed where the anterior, uh, anterior nasal packing has failed and we will go ahead with posterior nasal packing. Please do watch that. Thank you so much.